I thought about the service for today and what the Lord would have us to share. And uh, I know this is Christmas season and different things of that nature. Hustle, bustle, it's busy time right now. Amen. But I was wondering this week, are we too busy for Jesus? Are we too busy for Jesus? In Luke chapter 2. In Luke chapter 2. Just want to read that verse 7 there, and then we're going to share some other stuff with you, but I want to just read this scripture this morning. This is a story that will be read a lot, cited a lot this Christmas season, talking about a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed and all that kind of stuff, but I want to drop down to verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Heavenly Father, I look to you this morning, Lord. Realizing, Lord, the day and the hour in which we live, Lord. The busyness of the times, the busyness of the season. But, Lord, are we living in a time when we're too busy for you, Jesus? Have we occupied our schedules to the point that we don't have time to pray. We don't have time to read the Word of God. We don't have time to come to church. We don't have time for these things. We're just so busy that there is no room for you, Jesus. I would pray this Sunday morning, Lord, that you would use us as a vessel unto honor this Sunday morning, Lord sanctified and holy and meet for the master's use. Uh, I desire today to be a blessing to your people. Uh, I desire today, Lord, that you would be glorified, that you would be exalted, uh, that you would be lifted up in all that we do, Lord, uh, and that you would speak to your people this Sunday morning uh, through the preaching uh, of the word of Almighty God. Uh, for thy word, O oh Lord, is a lamp under our feet, David said, and a light under our path. Uh, Lord, we need the word of God this morning, Lord. Uh, we need your touch, your divine intervention. Uh, now, Lord, would you do all of these things, uh, and Lord, we'll be careful to give you the glory, uh, the honor, and the praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Shake a few hands. Tell them it's good to see them this morning. It is a busy time of the season. I'd like to tell you this morning we should never be too busy for Jesus. I would say this, if we're that busy, we need to cut some things out. Come on, talk to me this morning, church. I know we might not be as full as we normally are on Sunday morning, but it don't change the Word of God. Word of God's still the same, amen? Amen. The Bible said, and it so it was while they were there that the day should be accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. When I think about where Jesus is at, Jesus is in a feeding trough. It's a feeding place for animals. The inn was just... Uh, it was for the poorest of the poor. Now I want you to get a, a good picture of this this morning in your mind. In this place called the inn, it was a shelter of walls and a roof. And it was for all strangers that they could come to. An inn. A feeding trough. Doesn't sound like where our Savior would be born. But I want to share some things with you this morning. 
We're living in a society today where people don't have time for Jesus anymore. Amen. I'm going to go back to verse 7, but just listen to me for a little bit. You see, because I begin to think about it and think about the scriptures and think about history and the things that's taken place in our society to bring us to the 21st century church where we're living in a time, even today, there's still no room for Jesus. We can make room for everything else. Come on, I said we. But it's hard to make room for Jesus. I begin to go back in time, Brother Jody, and search for some stuff that I was thinking about that would lead us up to today. I went back to a time of 1962. Engel versus Vital. In the 370 U.S. 421, 1962, it was a, a, a time, a land where uh, landmark, the United States Supreme Court case, in which the court ruled that it was unconstitutional for state officials to compose an official school prayer and encourage its recitation in public schools. No room for Jesus. In 1963, the Supreme Court banned Bible reading in America's public schools thanks to Madeline Murray O'Hare. One woman that didn't have time for Jesus took Jesus out of our school systems. May 15, 2012, the Supreme Court banned all Ten Commandments to be pulled from all public schools. Hmm? And then you wonder why we're in the mess <laughs> that we're in today. It's because throughout time, the annals of time, we've not had time for Jesus. He's not been wanted. He's been rejected. He's been put out. Nobody wants anything to do with him. June 28, 2005. The court system ruled five to four that the Ten Commandments, that big, gigantic, granite uh, replica be removed from our courthouse. Didn't want Jesus to be displayed out there. Didn't want him. December the 9th, 2004. The White House removed that big, big gigantic granite monument of the Ten Commandments from the state capitol grounds. June the 30th. Listen, we can't do all of that anymore. We can't talk about Jesus because it's offensive. We offend the atheist that don't even believe in God. Madeline O'Hare was one of them. We offend this one or that one over there because we talk about Jesus in public. We're living in an American society that was founded on in God we trust. But now in the 21st century church, we moved from 1962 through the annals of time and we found out that it just didn't start today in America that people had no time for Jesus. It started many years ago when people denied him, rejected him, and wanted nothing to do with this man, Jesus. It's offensive to him, but listen, but listen. Remove the Ten Commandments. Get the prayer out of school. Stop Bible reading. But yet, June 30th, 2015, the White House was illuminated into rainbow colors. Friday evening, a nod to the achievement of gay rights. 
We can't display the Ten Commandments out on the courthouse lawn. But yet on June the 30th, 2015, it was okay for the President Obama to light up the lighthouse, signifying that gay rights had been brought in and all was good and our White House was lit up in all the rainbow colors. And then you tell me why there is no need for Jesus. That's why we're in the condition we're in because our society has rejected him from the beginning. Harry tried to kill him and get rid of him our society don't want him they didn't want him then the Jews rejected him and now America has come to a point that nobody has time for Jesus no room for Jesus in the end I wonder this Sunday morning I wonder the Bible said in John 1 and 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. We talk about Jesus. And I'm just going to be very blunt with us. Let's go to us as Christians this morning. We know the world don't want him. But do we want him? Can I just talk to our hearts this morning? Do we even want him anymore? Is there any room on our schedule for him? Is there any time to pray anymore? Is there any time to read God's Bible anymore? Is there any time to call upon Jesus anymore? Really, my brothers and my sisters, is there time in our hearts, in our room, for this man called Jesus? Oh, I feel your Holy Ghost. Speak to us, Lord. In Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. And all they in the synagogue and they that heard these things were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him, Jesus, out of the city, led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. Get rid of this man, Jesus. He's offensive to us. He puts a cramp in my style. Huh? Well, I, I don't mind saying a little something on Sunday, but just don't bother me through the week with that stuff. Come on, y'all with me this morning. Huh? I'm telling you the society that you and I are living in right now. Huh? What are you telling me? I'm telling you this man came to give everything for you and I. Matter of fact, go to Isaiah 53 with me right quickly. Thank you, Lord. Go to Isaiah chapter 53 with me. Isaiah 53. Look at verse 3 and then 7 through 9. He is despised and rejected a man he is despised and rejected of men, Pastor, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not, verse 7. He was oppressed, he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Verse 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. The only thing this man Jesus was ever guilty of is loving a sinner man and a sinner woman like you and me. That's the only thing, Sister Yvonne, that he's ever been guilty of. He's a man of love, but yet he was despised and rejected. He's been hated down through the centuries. He's been hated by society. He's been hated by the church. He's been hated by atheists. He's been hated by those, hallelujah, that don't want nothing to do with him. He's been cast out of the garden. He was cast out of the crib. He's been cast out of America. He's been cast out of our churches. He's been cast out of our homes because there is no room for Jesus in our house anymore. What are you telling me, bro? I'm telling us this Sunday morning that there is no room for Jesus anymore. We 
become a society that doesn't need him anymore. Get him out of our schools. Take him off the courthouse lawns. Take him down out of the courthouses. Get him away. We want nothing to do with this man, Jesus. But Marty, I wonder sometimes, I just wonder sometimes, have we said in our hearts, we may not have voiced it, but have we said in our heart, I don't have time for you, Jesus. Yes. Among the ranks of Christianity. Huh? Have we come to that point, church? Huh? Well, we have no time for him anymore. Huh? We come to church and we got to be out by a certain time because we're so busy. So busy. Huh? I was talking to a lady the other day. She said, I want you to do something, Pastor. I said, what is that? She said, you and First Lady here, I want you to just leave all your cares outside that door when you walk in. Forget about your problems. She just began to talk to us that way. And I thought how peaceful it was for just a little while. To forget about your problems. Forget about all these other things happening in our lives. Huh? And just be at peace for just a little bit. Huh? Can I tell you, if you love Jesus, one day we're going to be at peace for eternity. <laughs> I said, if you love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ... I understand that we're living in a world like Madeline O'Hara. But guess what? Her very own son. <laughs> Even though her, his mama was an atheist, didn't believe in God, took prayer out of schools and had it banned. But yet her own son came behind her. A man that accepted Jesus Christ and became a lover of the cross. What are you telling me? I'm telling you, there may be a lot that don't want him, but God's got a handful. I said God's got a handful. I said God's got a handful of men and women that's been born again. That's been and washed in the blood and their name is written down in the Lamb's book of life and they're on their way to heaven and heaven is sounding sweeter all the time. Do I have anybody in here that's got time for Jesus, that's got room for Jesus, that's got a house for Jesus, that loves Jesus, that's been converted to Jesus and you love him with all your heart. Give him praise in the house. Yes, we're living in a society that don't want him. But thank God he's got some people that still want him. In our hearts and lives, he's still number one. When we're at the mall, he's still number one. Hallelujah. When we're on our jobs, he's still number one. And we're not ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Huh? Paul said, I know he's my redeemer. Huh? Abraham said, I know him. Huh? Peter, Paul, James, and John said, I know him. And on and on, there is a remnant. God said he'd have a remnant of people that wanted him. I want to encourage you to do something this Christmas season. Huh? I want to encourage you to not be ashamed of the gospel. I want to encourage you to stand up for what you believe in. You believe in this book? Don't back down to nobody. Huh? Don't back down to them. Hallelujah. I know the majority don't want him anymore. Hallelujah. I think a while back they wanted to take him off of our money. That in God we trust was offensive. It, 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 it offended people's, amen, not salvation, but their religion, their beliefs, amen. Because there's a difference in religion and salvation, amen. Everybody's got religion nowadays. All of Hollywood's got religion today. All the superstars have got religion today. But religion will carry you straight to hell. I've come by to tell you about a man that can 
can give you salvation. That can give you life. That can give you hope. That can give you joy. Is anybody with me this morning? I believe I'm among somebody that's got room for Jesus this Christmas. I said, I'm going to believe somebody that's got room for Jesus in their end. They've not only built him a shelter, they built him a room. They built him a house. They put him a place in their heart where he can abide forever and forever and forever. Do you have room for Jesus in your heart this year? Do you? Huh? I know this is a simple message, but it goes to show you in our society. Huh? They don't want it. They tell me in reading history that our last president put up statues of Islam in our White House. But thank God. We got one in there now that said he removed them all. And not only, Brother Jason, did he remove all the Islamic statutes, he's brought prayer back in the White House. Uh, hallelujah. I, I don't know our president's standing. Uh, hallelujah. I don't know whether he's a Christian or not. That's beside the point. I'm just trying to tell you what he's trying to do this morning. Amen. Uh, at least he's not serving Buddha over there. Uh, at least he ain't got Muhammad up in the White House. Uh, at least he ain't lit it up uh, in the rainbow colors. Uh, he's a man that honors God uh, and still knows there is a God uh, when half of the church world don't even know there is a God. There's a man in the wild house that says there is a God. Come on somebody. Are you with me? There's still some people out there that has room for Jesus this year in their hearts and in their lives. What are you telling me? I'm telling us. Thank God. Things are lining up. Things are getting ready, friend. For the very one, for the very one that through the annals of time that history has rejected. He's lining things up. Getting ready for his soon return. And he's coming back after a people that's got room for him. Huh? Come on, church. Are you with me? He's coming back after people that has room for him. Huh? Even among his own, he was rejected. He went unto his own and his own received him not. Huh? The Bible said, listen, huh? that we're without honor in our own country. Huh? You see, you get around folks sometime and they remember you how you used to be. Hello. They ain't seen you in 20, 30 years. You know, they don't really know you that now. And you meet up with them. And boy, they remember you from long years ago. Them times you don't want to think about nor talk about. Come on. Amen. Amen. Say, so what's all that got to do with this preacher? Well, I hope before they leave your presence, they will know that they know that they know. Hallelujah, that something has changed inside of you. That you're not the man, you're not the woman that you used to be. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. The cursing you used to do, you don't curse anymore. The places the songwriter said I used to go, I don't go anymore. The things I used to drink, I don't drink anymore. The songs I used to dance to, he said I don't dance to them anymore. You know why? Because this man, that there was no room for him in the end. When the town people didn't want him, when nobody acknowledged him, thank God for a man named Joseph that we talked about on Wednesday night that said, hey, I understand. She might have not been pregnant by me, but the angel came to him and said, that thing which is conceived of Mary is of the Holy Ghost. She, hallelujah, shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. I know the world don't want him, but there's a few looking for him. I got up looking for him. I said I went to bed looking for him. I get up looking for him. I go through the day looking for him. Sister Dar said, any moment, he's coming back. I want to know, are you ready? Do you have room for Jesus in your heart and in your life this Sunday morning? Do you have room for Jesus? 
in a society that don't want him, in a society that curses his name daily and profanes his holy glory. You want to break my heart? You let me hear his name in vain. I can't stand it. I'm going to say something about it. Huh? Because it offends me. What about our rights, folks? Huh? Sister Ann, them in prison got more rights than we got. Huh? You know why? They stand up for theirs. Huh? They proclaim theirs. The world of homosexuality proclaims theirs. They've flown it. They're not ashamed of it. Huh? Are we ashamed of Jesus this morning? Are we ashamed to be called Christians? They were first called Christians at Antioch. Huh? Are we ashamed? Huh? I'm not ashamed this morning of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation, isn't it? Hallelujah. It brought me out of darkness into light. It gave me hope, Sister Joni, when I didn't have no hope. It gave me another chance at life when I thought I was going to die and go to hell. Amen. You know, I think about, I think about, amen, as my brother shared this morning with us in Sunday school. I thought about Mr. Gale, amen. The many times when I heard this morning that he was at the hospital and they're calling in the family. He's not doing well at all. Amen. And I thought about him this morning. And in a moment, moment of time it flashed back through my mind brother small what you were talking about the many times that he and I have said at the hospital in his room on his bed with him in his home amen in his living room with him not long ago and I talked to him about Jesus and how Jesus has been good to you son and how Jesus woke you up this morning but in the end he would look at me and say and honestly not these same words but there is no room in my heart for Jesus but right now he's laying on a deathbed and if this man Jesus whom he has rejected whom he has cursed and whom he has denied if this man Jesus don't reach down and have mercy upon his soul he'll go out into eternity and burn forever in a devil's hell what are you telling me God is gracious God is merciful God is long suffering not willing that any should perish but that all should come unto repentance is there room for Jesus in your heart this year Asking you this morning the question, uh, is there room for Jesus in your heart this year? Huh? Do we want just $2 worth of him? As old brother Harry Clark might would preach. Huh? Just $2 worth of him. Is that all we want this year? Huh? Is it about the gifts? Is it about the toys? Huh? What is it about this year? Huh? My daughter asked me the other night and my wife been on me this year what do you want for Christmas I said nothing don't need nothing don't want nothing I said there is one thing I want I want my family together and I want them to know about Jesus Christ and serve him that's my request sister Kay Queen Elizabeth said, I'd give every gem studded diamond wardrobe that hangs in my closet for just five minutes to get ready to meet this man, Jesus. I'd give everything that I own for just a few minutes. You see, I understand something, folks. My children are no different from your children. My children get caught up in things in the world just like your children do. Huh? My children got problems just like your children got problems. My wife and I got problems just like you got problems. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. We want our family to do right, Brother Jody. We want them to live right. We want them to be in church. Uh, does it always happen? No, it don't always happen. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. But I'm telling you this Sunday morning uh, that Jesus is coming back. Amen. Uh, and I want to tell you, uh, he's coming back after a people uh, that have Jesus in their hearts uh, and in their lives. Amen. Uh, let's build him a room, Pastor Williams, uh, for him to be able to dwell in our spirit and in our inner man world may not want him but there is a few people that want him 
You see, David declared, and I've read this several times in this church in the last in, in the years past, but I'd just like to read a portion of it this morning to let you know that he's still here with us this morning. David said he supplies f- strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted to try. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens, he sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leper. He forgives the sinner. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder, do you know him this year? Do you have room for him? David said, well, this is my king. Do you know him this morning? Is he your king? He is the knowledge. He is the key to wisdom or knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. I wonder, do you know him? Well, his office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you this morning. One last thing the writer said, he's indescribable, he's incomprehensible, he's invincible, he's irresistible. Well, the writer said you can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. Are you with me this morning? The Pharisees couldn't stand him. Amen, but they found they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave could not hold him. I'm telling you about a man called Oh, Jesus, that's coming back soon and very soon. I wonder about 10 people would stand up with me right now and say, I got room for Jesus this year. I got room for Jesus this year. He abides in my heart and he abides in my life. He is my king. He is my everything. He is my all in all. And I will let him live in the corners of my heart. He'll reign and rule in supreme. What are you telling me this morning? Let the world deny him. Let the atheists curse him. It ain't going to stop his return. It ain't going to stop his word. It won't change one iota or one promise that's written in the book. He's coming back. He's coming back after a people that's got room for him. Huh? Huh? Listen, brothers and sisters, don't push him out of your heart. Don't push him out of your life. Huh? I see married couples today living in our society push one another away till after a while they don't love each other no more. Why? Because they couldn't find room for them. Huh? I want them Hallmark fellas. Huh? Yeah, y'all can laugh. I sat there yesterday evening watching Hallmark Christmas stories. Huh? How this woman was so busy in life wanting to win, win, win. That's her daddy had taught her. You're a winner, honey. You're a winner, Mary. You're a winner, Mary. Huh? That's all they want you to do, Mary. Win, 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 win. She wind up growing up. Sister K becoming an adult woman, got married, had a young child. But in the process of it all, she lost her husband. She lost her daughter. She lost it all. And in the end, she realized something. That it was not about winning. It was about cherishing and loving those that are in your life at the time. Look over at your neighbor this morning, would you? Look at them. Can I tell you something? They're not going to always be there. Huh? Brother Nita, they're not going to always be there. Huh? You know, I, I think about some of you in here that are my seniors and your health is getting feeble on you. I even thought this week just riding down the road and thinking, Lord, what would so and so do without so and so? How would they make it, Lord? I said at a pastor's banquet on Thursday evening. And 
And I didn't know if we was going to do it again this year because our district overseer passed. He's gone home to glory. But his wife called us up and she said, Pastor, I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I feel like Pastor Bill would want us to continue this. At least this year. Can we meet at Giorgio's in E-Town where we normally meet for Pastor's Banquet? I said, yes, sister, we sure will. So we met. She brought her husband's brother who is identical, looks like a twin to him, talks like him. Reminded me so much of Pastor Bill. But I watched her, Sister Kay, as she sat there at the table. There were times she was just lost. I said, sis, what are your plans? She said, I don't know. She said, right now there's too much going on to even think about the big decisions still after the first of the year. My parents want me to move to Florida with them. My daughter wants me to move in with her at E-Town or wherever that's at. And then her son's at Myrtle Beach down there, has a big business down there, and he wants her to move in. with. She said, but you know, I just need to be by myself right now. She said, I can't grieve when I'm looking in somebody's face 24-7. She said, I just need time to grieve and be by myself. That's a big portion is where she lives. But Sister Kay, that hit me this week. What would some of us do without the other one? Because if time lasts, some of us is going to go out into eternity. But my question to you is, will there be room for Jesus in your heart when that time comes? Huh? You see, because none of us are guaranteed tomorrow, folks. I'm just talking to you out of my heart this morning. Huh? And I'm asking you the question, as they said for Jesus, there was no room for them in the end. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? We're living in a society. We're living in a church world. I said the church world. Where many churches don't even want him anymore. Brother Small, if we can just come and have normal service, nobody get hysterical or excited. Nobody do anything out of the ordinary. We okay. But if the Lord Jesus was to happen to show up huh? in some of those churches, what would they do? John even said he's among us. And you know him not. He's with us. And we don't even acknowledge him. Have we come to a time in our churches where God or the Lord Jesus would show up, but we never acknowledge him, and now he doesn't show up anymore? Samson was God's strong man. But he played around and played around and played around. Pastor Williams, until one morning he woke up, shook himself as at other times when his woman said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he shook himself as at other times, but he wished not that the Spirit of the Lord had departed. Are we living in that society now? Our churches have abandoned the only help that was available for us. We, we, we're ridiculed now because we proclaim Jesus. Somebody stands on a street corner and preaches about this man Jesus and they're made fun of nowadays. Huh? We pray in public and people just look at us. Let them look. I still pray in public. Huh? My wife, I always join hands across the table. And we'll pray in public. I still pray at the, at, at the hospitals. All they can do is ask me to leave. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? That's the society we're living in today. When the majority of people don't want him anymore. Want nothing to do with him. Disregarded him. Speak evil. Yeah, they want you to pray quiet now. Yeah. Yeah. 
But you know what? It's always a blesses me about that preacher. I've been to the hospital so much, a lot of the nurses know me and the staff workers know me. And they'll slip in while we're praying and close the door and pray with me. <laughs> yeah! Amen! Hallelujah! They may work for Caesar, but what Caesar don't know or hurt them. <laughs> Hallelujah! Are you with me? It's all right to pray. You see, I know the founder of Hobby Lobby. He spoke to us some years ago at a convention. And I listened to the CEO. David Green, is that his name? That's him, yeah. CEO of Hobby Lobby. Remember just a few years ago? They wanted to make him start providing insurance for people having abortions and stuff. Huh? <laughs> and he said, I won't do it. He said, I'll close down every shop I got. He said, and all my family run them and work for me. He said, but I would be willing to put every one of them out of business and close all the doors before I do it. And they fined him so many thousand dollars per day. He paid the money, but he never gave in to them. Huh. And he don't open on Sunday. Huh. What are you telling me? I'm telling us, brothers and sisters, uh, there is some people out there with some good morals about them. Huh? And those type of people I don't mind doing business with. Are you with me? Huh? But those that don't acknowledge God want nothing to do with God. I have a problem doing business with them kind of folk. Huh? And you ought to have the same problem too. Huh? What are you saying? Because they have no room for Jesus in their end. Huh? And the Bible tells me to come out from among them type of folk and be separate. What are you telling me, Pastor? It's just a simple message this morning. Just a simple message to you. And my question again is to you, do you have room for Jesus this year? With all the hustle, the bustle, my wife and I were down at the beach this weekend, finished up some Christmas shopping, trying to decide for this one and for that one. You know how it is. People are driving crazy. Huh? Yeah. Run all over you. Huh? If you see somebody you know they ain't got time to talk to you, they got to keep going. Huh? Brother Leo, they ain't got time to stop and talk because I might want to talk about Jesus. Huh? They ain't got time to talk with me about Jesus. They want to know where the latest sale is and this and that and the other, Sister Yvonne. Huh? This year, this year, I hope you give your family Jesus. Huh? I said, I hope you give your family Jesus this year. Well, preacher, I, I know what you're going to tell me. Preacher, they don't want to hear. Who cares? If they're in my house, they're going to hear about Jesus. Huh? It can be children, aunts, uncles, cousins, sisters, brothers. It don't make no difference. It's about Jesus for me. It's about this babe that laid in a manger. Born in Bethlehem. Huh? Why? Because the Bible said he would be born there. Huh? But you know what I found about this baby? I don't want to talk too much about this baby because Brother Jody's got him Wednesday night after next. Brother's got Mary this week. I had Joseph, Mary, and he's going to do the baby. He don't know it, but he is. Huh? I got Joseph. He's got Mary. He's got the baby. And then we're going to go into Jesus. Amen. What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us that's what it's all about this morning, folks. Huh? Joseph, if I told you on Wednesday night, just a great discussion Wednesday night. I tell you, I enjoyed that thing, son. Talking about this man, Joseph, and how he met up with a woman and he loved her. He was betrothed to her. And according to the custom in the Old Testament, when they were betrothed, they were actually already married, so to speak. Nobody else couldn't have them. And then all of a sudden she comes up one day and tells him, um, a woman that's never known a man said, I'm pregnant. Huh? How in the world can you be? And then she gives him a, a foolish story. Huh? 
an angel came to me. Put a baby in my womb. Huh? And told me I was going to conceive and bear a child, a son. And his name will be called Jesus. And this thing that's done of thee is of the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, y'all, but not the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. That's me. That's me. You all right with that preacher? <laughs> I like to mess with the preacher. Amen. And, and what happened? We, talk, we talked about it Wednesday night. He was minded to put her away. He, he was going to get rid of this woman. Even though he loved her, he put her away privately so she wouldn't be embarrassed. Huh? Because I told you on Wednesday evening that in that day she'd have been killed. She'd have been put to death according to Deuteronomy. Huh? Well, what if it was like that in America today? Huh? Yeah, that's right. There you go. What are you telling me, preacher? But after the angel came to him and spoke to him, he took this woman to himself. And I told him on Wednesday night, he had never known her up to this time. And now for nine more months, he won't know her. Think about it. Men, Josephs, huh? Think about it. Nine more months, he won't know her. Because that can, things that's conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and it can't be contaminated. Huh? It's holy. It's righteous. It's God's son. It's Mary's baby. Huh? It'll be Joseph's child. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? That same child's coming back. Huh? He's coming back. But my question to you one more time before I close this service. Is there any room for him in your end? Do you have room for Jesus? Come on, Sister Kay. Do you have room for Jesus this morning? Huh? Is he in your heart? Is he in your life? Is he in your family? Huh? I look out over this congregation and some of yours was probably like mine. Had grandmothers and granddaddies that prayed for our salvation. That we would be saved. Parents that would pray that we would be saved. Huh? I wonder this morning. Is Jesus in your heart? Is Jesus in your life? There was no room for them in the end. Laid in a feeding trough. Put under just a, a, a shelter with a roof. A place for animals. But remember I told you in the end all strangers were welcome. Today this man Jesus says to each and every one of us all are welcome. All are welcome. In the end, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I'd like to ask you the question again. Do you have Jesus in your heart? Do you have him in your life? Is he the creator? Is he the mighty God in your soul? Or have you come to a point in life where, preacher, I'm just too busy. I don't have time for Jesus anymore. I have a family now. I have children. and My life is so hectic. I just don't have time, preacher, for Jesus anymore. Lord, I pray over this congregation. Lord, that every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl would find room for you, Jesus, in their end this year. That they'll not wait too long or too late. And hear you say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. I want to hear you say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. 
Lord Jesus, I'm glad there's room for you in my end this day. That I won't leave this church without you today. One writer said, if you don't go with me, Jesus, I won't go. That little Shunammite woman told the prophet Elijah, said, if you don't go, I won't go. What are you telling me today, Pastor? I'm telling you today that all are welcome. All are welcome at Jesus' house. If you're here right now as saints are praying, you may be here and say, Preacher, I once known him, but I've drifted away. I want to get Jesus back in my heart, in my life. Would you just slip up your hand and put it down? That's it. Is there one? It's up to you, ma'am, sir. It's up to you, mom, dad. It's up to you. This preacher loves you this morning. I love you enough to tell you the truth. If there's not room for Jesus in the end in your heart, you're going to die and be lost. That's the bottom line. But if you've got room for Jesus in your end and He lives in you and you die, you're going to home to be with Him forever and eternity. Right now, I want every man, every woman, every boy, every girl to search your heart. David said, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lord, if there is, root it out. Destroy it. Get rid of it. Lord, because I want you back in my heart, back in my life. Lord Jesus, thank you today for your spirit, for your word. Thank you for this congregation, Lord. Lord, I thank you for each and every one in this place. And I pray, Lord, that you'll go with us, you'll be with us, and you'll be the Lord of our life for eternity.